from the Lord. Amen? And I'm excited about it. I was talking to it in my class. Sister Dawn came in in the middle of my class and took over for me because I owed the kids some donuts. And they went and got donuts and they went over a few of my points. Let us pray. Father in heaven, gracious Savior of ours, we come this morning, God, to be able to minister unto your people. I pray, God, as you speak through me, God, that you give your people hope and encouragement for this coming week and for the rest of this year. Help us, Lord, to do what you called us to do. I pray for our bishop and I ask for his protection, your protection over his life, his wife, his children. I thank you so much for each and every one that is here. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you remove me today and speak to your people. Amen? Amen. All right. Today, you can turn to the book of Luke, chapter 23. As my beautiful sister, uh, Vickery, uh, read for you, 23, starting at verse 32. Isn't it amazing that we have an opportunity to touch this community? And if we decide to walk in the lanes that God has given us, if we decide to use the power that he has given us, if we decide to use the joy that he has already placed in our spirits, if we decide to use the new mercies that he gives us every morning, uh, we can be victorious. Amen? I titled my message today, He Thought It Was That Important. He, meaning Christ, thought it was that important. What, what are you talking about? There's some things at the cross, at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. It was there by faith. We're going to see something by faith. Someone today that was there at the cross. It was there that he saw God. And who he was in his majesty. So my question this morning is, what do you want people to remember you as? What, what is going to be your legacy? What is going to be my legacy? What do you want people to know about you? I didn't know that when Pastor Bob died, that he got people off the street to teach them how to do electricity, to be an electrician, and now they have a career because he saw fit to go talk to somebody. Testimony after testimony after testimony about who he was. I had no idea. He never played a practical joke on me. But I didn't know that that man was a jokester, moving Herman around, scaring our bishop. What is going to be your legacy? What is going to be my legacy? What are we going to leave for our children? What do they know us as? Do they know us as an arguer, huh? Do they know us as being holy? What do they know us as? What do our babies? I'm watching Aiden this morning, and I'm going to get to my message. I'm sorry. I'm watching Aiden this morning, and he was imitating his grandma or his mama, whatever he called her, right? Are we imitating Christ like little Aiden was imitating his grandma? He didn't realize that if he used two hands, he can do what
what she done or what she was doing? Are our children imitating us even in the good and the bad? Oh, Lord, I, I got a quiet house, but I'm going to preach anyway. You know that. The last things Christ did from the cross were the things he wanted us to remember. We're going to take a look at that today. Amen? So, I will read a few verses and then, you know what, I'll read this too. Let's look at Christ's prayer. We're going to look at his prayer. Then we're going to dissect the prayer from his petition to his plea. Then we're going to move on to the thieves. Amen? Be with me. Be with me. I got something for you today. Verse 34 says, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Verse 35 of Luke 23. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them dreaded him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if, you see that? They wrong, man. But if he is, <laughs> and you hear, you see it in the word there, if, right? We know that he is the Christ. Amen? Ain't no if about it, baby. He is. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. Right here we see the manifestation of the mission of the Messiah. He came down in the, to the cross for you and for me. You know those things you've done, and we have all have done that are in the secret. We don't want nobody to know about them. And, but if they will start reading the list, we're guilty. Amen? Can I get an amen in the house? All right, thank you now. Help me out now. And so the manifestation of Christ coming to the cross, dying in our places, coming for us, was the manifestation of his mission for the Messiah. Just coming, just being on that cross, just staying on that cross. Amen? Let's break down this simple but powerful prayer. Let's look at his petition. Father, forgive them. I would think he should have prayed, Father, Consume them. How are they going to treat me like that? I'm saving their souls. I want to do more for them. Let's look at Isaiah 53 and 12. I got it right here. And it says, in Isaiah, they prophesied that this would happen. I just wanted you to see that I'm biblically correct. Amen. Therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great. That's important. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Mm. And he bare the sin of many. And made intercession for his transgressions. This verse means that God will account the Messiah among the great. The Messiah will divide the, small, the spoils of the strong. Listen, referring to his mighty victory, my God, over Satan and supernatural powers against God. Check this out. This means that he shares, hmm, my God, he shares the blessings of victory with his followers. You know who the followers are, right? Joint heirs with him. You have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart to become a joint heir, to receive the blessings that he won when he defeated Satan and all of those who come against him. We have blessings flowing our way. You ought to be excited about it. I'm excited. This is miracle resurrection season. I'm in the midst of a miracle. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I've got a miracle on my way. Aren't you excited about what's in your heart for your miracle? You're acting like you don't even have a miracle. 
there's a miracle with your name on it. But you got to praise him. You got to worship him. You got to be involved in what he's doing. My God. Father, forgive them. Not only these, but all that shall repent. Prophesying and that, that shall repent. That's future. That's shit. They're going to do it, but they haven't done it yet. You know those cousins you got. And that haven't confessed with their mouth and believed in their heart. You know those co-workers that you have that are not saved yet. They shall repent. Amen? Or guess what? Mr. Boat, baby, you either do or you don't. You come in hook or crook. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So Muhammad and Buddha and Harry Krishna, all y'all got to come. At the name of Jesus. At his name, at his very name. You need to bow your head and submit yourself to his power. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's going to happen. The great thing which Christ died to purchase. We've been bought with a price. And this price, man, was expensive blood that flowed from Calvary. You understand? It was very expensive for him to leave the battlements of glory, to come down to this earth, to die for as wretched like you and me. And sometimes we are ungrateful For the fact that our Lord gave his life, he shed it his blood. He was beaten, battered, and bruised for us. And then we act like we don't want to serve him. We act like we don't care about him. We walk in his house and don't say hi to him. We don't have a relationship with him. We don't even want to talk to him during the day. But when something happens in our life, he's the first one we call. He's no cosmic bellhop. He is no um, spare tire. Only use them when you need them. He's there. By faith, I receive my sight. It was there at the cross, baby. Do you understand that it's time, it's time, it's time that we serve him in gladness. We serve him in truth. Look around. See all of these empty seats. Who have we invited to his house? Who don't we should not care about the rejection? All we have to do is give the invitation. It's up to him. But if we do not invite, it's going to continue to look like this. Shame on all of us. Invite until you can't do it no more. I'm moving on. Okay, we looked at his petition. Let's look at the plea of the prayer. We saw his prayer. He thought it was important to intercede. He thought it was important to forgive at the cross. You see it? It's right there in the word. He thought it was important to pray to his daddy. He prayed. He forgave. And then he interceded. Do you see the correlation there? He prayed to his daddy. He he forgave. Then he moved on and went into a special place, a place of intercession. I don't have to see Dawn to pray for Dawn. I don't have to see Carolyn to pray for Carolyn. I don't have to see Obi to pray for Obi. I pray anyway. Pray so much for Sister Michelle, she don't even use her mask no more. (laughs) And am I taking credit for it? No. But the prayers of the righteous avail much. It wasn't me that was going to the gym working out so she could lose weight. So she don't have to use the mask. She did it. I came in agreement with what she was doing. Amen. We have to be in agreement with each other so that we can. Feel, I feel good about what she's done. It ain't me. But I prayed for someone. Pray for little promises not to have no more seizures. She's going to grow out of them. Ain't my child. But I prayed. And I'm praying for y'all too. Whether you like me or not, I don't care. 
You ain't got no heaven or hell to put me in. I ain't worried about you. The plea, the plea. Father, they know not what they do. For if they had known, they would not have crucified him. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So while they was, while they was laid down, and they put that stake in him, and they put that other stake in him, and then they went down to his feet and put another stake. They was doing fine. But when they rose him up, when they lifted him up, he said, I'll draw so everyone can see. This God we serve, he's bad, man. He's bad. He's cold-blooded. He don't care about nothing about you, nothing about me, but he loves us anyhow. And we need to serve him with gladness. Amen? Look at first what 1 Corinthians say, 2 and 8, it says, But we speak of the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which ordained before the world of our glory, unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known, they would have not crucified him to glory. Wouldn't have crucified him. Wouldn't have lifted him up. I, 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 break it, I break it down. I leave Christ alone. And I just go to the angel of this house. How many of y'all purchased your uh, banquet tickets yet? Have you even started the little payment plan? How can we say we love that bald-headed man in the back? And we do not even... We do not even lay $5 aside because you know the day is coming. Then you're going to have to pay for four tickets. You ain't going to have that money, and you're going to say sorry. No, man, we need to show our appreciation. Do you know how bad it is to mess with y'all for 30 years? Me for only six? <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all raising your finger, I only got two in. <laughs> Some of y'all been with him a long time. Hey. But if you need to give up your banquet money, see Bertha today, amen? All right, all right. He thought it was important to show forgiveness. <clears throat> I try to teach my kids in Lighthouse Christian Academy that if they do not operate in forgiveness, their, player, their prayers hit a ceiling. They don't even get through to God. So that all you have with your husband or with your wife or with your cousins or somebody in your family or somebody that you're working with, guess what, baby? You're the Christian. You got to work on God. You need to help me with this. He don't mind you being honest with him. He doesn't mind you telling him the truth. If you, don't remind, if you don't mind getting the answer, he wants you to say, well, all right, well, then if you believe in me, go to them and tell them you're sorry. For anything that I have said that might have gone against you, matter of fact, why don't you come to my church on Sunday? They're having a great thing for your children. Bring your children to our Easter egg. There's going to be a lot of goodies for them. And you can see what I'm all about. God will create an avenue, a door for help. Amen? And then he says in Psalms 20 that there is help in the sanctuary. Just let them get through the door, baby. We just got to get them through the door. But if you're not inviting, if I'm not inviting, what? Johnny invited the young lady sitting next to his right. And guess what? She ended up staying. It's not up to us. You don't like this joke? Okay. He thought it was important to pray. He thought it was important to intercede. He thought it was important to forgive. All at the cross. He wanted us to remember him as a prayer. He wanted us to remember him as somebody who forgave. He wanted us to remember him as someone who interceded. So that we can follow the model that brought him great victory. Man, that's good wood right there, baby. Listen, he wanted us to follow that so that we can become like him 
do like him for the kingdom. Man. Okay. The greatest sinners made through Christ upon their repentance hope to find mercy, though they were persecutors and murderers, he prayed for, Father, forgive them. Verse 36, I'm moving along. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. For the subscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, my God, listen to this now, Greek and Latin and Hebrew, this is, my God, the king of the Jews. They mocked him. They made sport of him, made jest of his sufferings. When they were drinking sharp, sour wine themselves, such as generally allotted them, they triumphantly asked him, if he wanted to drink. Mm. You know how they do when you're pledging. Y'all know in them sororities and fraternities. And they said, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. For as the Jews, listen to this. For as the Jews prosecuted him of the notion that he is the pretended. The Jews thought he was the pretended Messiah. And the Romans under the notion that he was the pretended king. He is the king of glory, strong and mighty. He is. It was no pretend to that thing. They had it all wrong. My God. He is put to death in, for pretending to be the king of the Jews. So they meant it. But God intended it. All things work together for the good. For those who love the Lord and who are called according to what? His purpose. Check this purpose out. I love this. I was reading this. I was just getting happy. God challenges Christ to save himself and them. He's so bad, he's going to challenge the Savior, challenge our Redeemer, challenge our Restorer. So not only was he concerned, he was concerned about prayer, and he was concerned about forgiveness at the cross, and he was concerned about intercession. But sometimes in the midst of our own lives, we have challenges that can only be come through through God. He's the only one that can answer the challenges that come our way. So he was challenged at the cross. But check out verse 40. That's what I love right here, baby. The confession, the confession at the cross. But the other answering, the other thief, the other one that stole from people, the other one that lied and stole, he said, answering, rebuked him, saying, does thou not fear God? Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. My God. Verse 41. And we... And we indeed justly, you like that? I like that right there. We indeed justly, we did wrong. We are guilty of what we've done. I done smoked that crack and drank that wine and did that heroin and, and did all kind of manner of things. But God now done allowed me to put 24 years together. Huh? When I couldn't put 24 seconds together, he has allowed me. So he gave me time to come to my right mind. There's time. There's room at the cross. You hear what I say? There's room at the cross for you, baby, if you decide to choose him. If you decide to live for him. If you decide to pray to him, there is room at the cross. Let's look at the confession now. The confession of the thief was illustrious instance of Jesus trying, of, of Christ triumphing over principalities and powers even when he seemed to be triumphed over. Looked bad for Jesus at that time. His boys wasn't nowhere around. Everybody done deserted him. But he stayed. Christ was crucified between two thieves. In them 
were represented the, dif the different effects of the cross would have been the children of men to whom it brought near to preaching the gospel. They were all malefactors, all guilty before God. Now, the cross of Christ to some is a savior of life unto life, and to others, death unto death. It don't matter to you if he died or not, but it matters to me because he loved me enough to come down 42 generations and stay on that cross when he could have commanded legions of angels to come and wipe out everything. But he stayed there because he knew somebody named Dick Bob was going to need a name change to Robert. And learn how to serve him. Learn how to lose that arrogance. And learn how to humble thyself under the mighty hand of God. And guess what? He will exalt you mm, in due time. <laughs> in due time, baby. You might think due time is in your season, uh, but it's in God's seasons. I tell people every day there's five seasons. There's winter, there's spring, there's summer, there's fall. But then there's due season. I operate in my due season. And I wait. And I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. Wednesday, I was home having a pity party, working for God, doing everything for God. And um, my daughter's birthday was the 19th. And Stephanie was not here because she's in school now. Her birthday is the 19th, so I usually try to shower her with something. But she wasn't here. I wasn't here either. But I'm home, upset. God, why I can't talk to my baby? I just want to talk to her. I just want to see if she's all right. And the next day, I woke up with new mercies. I felt better. My bishop didn't rail on me and say, you weren't in church. You're a leader. You're supposed to be here. So I wait for my due season. But then the hooks told me, because she was adopted, she said, it's something about people that they want to know where they come from. So then Tuesday, she said, Dawn, come in. And she said, you're going to see your daughter. You might not see her till, she, till, you, till she's 18, but you're going to see your daughter. And so I know she confirming what Sister Belinda said. So God is saying, wait, fool, go to work. Get off the pity party and go to work. So that's what I'm doing. Amen? So Romans 10 and 9 says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead, then we are saved. But during that time, look at this. Christ never led nobody to Christ. He never said that to anybody. So what are we talking about? But at the cross, at the cross where he first saw the light, and the burdens of his heart rolled away. He confessed. <laughs> that said, will say, he confessed that this was the Christ. He said, do, do, do you not fear God? Can't you see God is right here? He confessed with his mouth and he believed in his heart. I saw you in the conversion where he believed in his heart. So that's why we use that. But that is not the only way. Amen? Okay, let me move on. That's, that's evangelism. Let me stop. See what the other malefactor said. He reproved him for railing at Christ as destitute in the fear of God, having no sense of, at all of origin, religion. Does that not fear God? This implies that it was the fear of God which restrained him from following the multitude to do this evil. You see the conversion? See, and my bishop showed me, he said, well, who was here at the cross? Uh, what apostle was here? I said, John. He said, well, take John's account. I said, okay. So, in John's account, they were both railing on him, right? They were both talking about him. They were both blaspheming. They were both coming against Christ. But, this other thief, saw who Christ was, 
And in his seeing who Christ was, his heart was hardened at first. But he was converted. The softness of Christ, the love of Christ, ran through him, which changed his heart. What is changing your heart today? Is there anything or anyone or any situation that can change your hardened heart? My God. Verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me. When thou comest into thy kingdom, that's the conversion. There was a challenge. And then there was a confession. And now he's converted into the royal family. We are peculiar people. Huh? Holy and acceptable unto God. Yes. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Look at, look at now the hardened man. Excuse me. The hardened criminal is now converted unto Christ. He is now persuaded that this is the right way. Ain't no faking the funk with this guy. He believes in his heart. And then what does he do? He follows the lead of his Christ. He follows the lead of the anointed one. He follows the lead of Jesus, and he prays. You see it? Do you see it in the word? When I saw that, I said, my God, God, you keep giving me new stuff. And he said, he began to pray himself. My question is, are you praying? What are you asking God for? What is going on with you that you can't talk to the one who has saved our souls? This man, he prayed. He said, Father, remember me. Short prayer. Powerful prayer. Instant prayer. But prayer. My God, this prayer of a dying sinner to a dying Savior, it was the honor of Christ to be thus prayed to. Even in the midst of being Beaten, battered, and bruised with a crown of thorns on his head, pushed in his side, blood flowing from him from everywhere. But this one man, this one thief, saw that who he was and began to pray unto him. And guess what? Christ answered his prayer too. He's a bad man, ain't he? He answered the prayer even in the midst of him dying. It was his happiness of the thief thus to pray. Perhaps he never prayed before, and yet is now heard, saved at the last gasp, getting ready to die, but the Lord saved him. Pastor Sweeney's dad was on his deathbed. Two weeks before he died, he gave his life to Christ. It don't matter when it happens, just as long as it happens. And when we walk these streets, even if they say no, we be courteous. Well, God bless you, man. Listen, you know where the Verizon store is? Make a left right there. That's where our church is. Check you out one day. I know I'm going to see you. And move on to the next. But we are going. I told, I told Pastor Sweeney the other day, yesterday. If I'm not going to see my daughter, then I need you, God, to do something for me. I let 23, 26, I don't remember now. 26. So I need a double portion of what I did last year. So I need 52 souls myself when I hit these streets. 52 souls of bloods and crips. I don't care who they are. 52 souls of the homeless. 52 souls of those that are walking on Wall Street but living down here catching the train. I don't care who they are. Send me to Walmart. Send me to Kmart. Send me wherever you want to send me. But when I get there, let somebody need prayer and let somebody need to be saved. If I'm not going to see my daughter, I know these girls around here tired of me too. Cyan and all of them, they all, 
Oh, God, Pastor Ruel, I ain't dating nobody. Look, I want to see who this boy is. Bring him to church. I know I'm not your daddy, uh, but guess what? <laughs> you still belong to me till I get my baby. Amen? Now go for you too, Brianna. I see him over there. Amen. This man prayed in his last breath. God answered his prayer. What does he say? Let me see what he said again. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, not after I defeat the devil for three days in death. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So he died, went and took the keys from a homeboy. You don't belong to this anymore. I take that. That belonged to me now. You didn't think I was going to stay on the cross, but I did fool you. Uh-huh. You lifted me up. Now I'm drawing everybody. You stay down here and burn, and I'm going up there so I can save others from living with you. <laughs> yes, Christ was now in the death of disgrace, deserted by his own disciples, reviled by his own nation, suffering as a pretender, not delivered by his father. He made his, this profession the before those prodigies happened, which put honor on his sufferings. We put honor on it. The preachers put honor on it. But there was no honor back then. He was suffering through that thing for us, for you and for me. It is important that we believe God. I think I have one more minute. meant everything that he did on that cross. He forgave, he prayed, he interceded, he was challenged and he whooped the challenge, he heard a confession and he made a conversion all on the cross. Who are we mocking? Who is the one we want to be like so bad that we misuse Christ we don't choose him only as a cosmic bellhop or a spare tire. We say we're not going to do that sin again, but that sin is so powerful that we end up doing it again. Over and over again. And when we take communion, it says many are sick among you and they sleep. That means they die. But if we confess all of our failures of thought, word, and deed before him, when we partake in the communion, we're cleansed to try and get it right the next month. He's there for us if we just trust him and believe that he is the king of glory. Strong and mighty. He is the one who saved us. He is the one who redeemed us. He is the one that we give glory to. He is the one that we praise. He is the one that we worship. He is risen. Resurrection season. The miracle working power of God. Rest in us. And my question this morning Will you use his power? Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless because of the blood, the blood, the blood, because of the blood. Do you get it? Because the blood was shed, flowing from Calvary, we have a chance to get it right. who wants to serve him in gladness and truth. Now, you know what? Who just wants the conversion, who just wants to change, who just wants uh, to try something new in him. 
Yeah, we got a great leader. But it's him. Look at the fault. He is not there. When you go to his grave, he is not there. He is risen. We serve a risen Savior. And because he loved us so much, he stayed. Ha. He stayed there and took it all for a sinner like you and a sinner like me. My wife 